Hi everyone, welcome back to Workshop. This is just a little follow-up video of the L30-1 power supply that I sort of uh, renovated in the last video and I just wanted to finish off the power supply um, by doing a little bit of calibration. Let's get it operational and calibrated properly and also I've got the Farnell badge label plate, whatever you want to call it, that goes across the front here. Right, I don't really have the proper manual for this unit here. I've got a calibration manual, but unfortunately it's for the fully transistorized version, not the op-amp version that I've got here. Um, but we're just going to wing it. It looks like it's pretty easy to do. So if I just uh, let you see what's going on here, as I explained in my last video, you've got four potentiometers on the circuit board itself. Uh, two for setting the full scale of the meter, depending whether you're in voltage mode or current mode. And you've got two potentiometers for adjusting the span of the output voltage. There is no zero pots on this power supply at all. Uh, basically what you're required to do is, when you put the two front panel controls, the zero and the uh, fine right down at minimum you can see we're more or less at zero volts anyway the circuit's been designed that way and uh, the only zero control you've got is the physical zero on the meter itself which we will need to adjust. Uh, in my last video I did explain that there's actually a hole in the PCB that you can put a small screwdriver through to access the zero control, the physical control on the actual meter. So we'll start with that. Everything's got to be done with a zero and uh, set first, so we'll do that first. So there's a the circuit board and there's the hole there right at the end of the screwdriver. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it is marked meter zero. So I'll just turn this power supply back around again so that you can see the front of it. There we go. And the meter is uh, off to the side but we won't need that at the moment because we're just adjusting a physical zero. So I've got both pots right down at minimum there and I'll go in carefully with my small screwdriver. Luckily I had one that was pretty short and I can feel we're in it now and I'll just adjust. That's the wrong way. So I'll just bring it up until it's perfectly on the zero. There is actually a big shadow, so let's not get put off by that, but there we go, happy enough with that. I have let the power supply warm up for a good 20 minutes, so we should be good to go. There we go, happy with that. So I don't think we need to touch that zero again. Everything else will be done with the pots. So the next thing I want to do is, ignoring the meter, I want to set these to fully maximum and this is supposed to be a 30 volt power supply now as you can see we're getting about 31 and a half volts there on the output um, so what i want to do is adjust the span pots to adjust the output to exactly 30 volts when both pots are fully clockwise so there's the four pots I will be adjusting. They're marked P1, P2, P3 and P4 and luckily that's mapped directly onto the schematic so we should be able to uh, adjust the right pot first time. So what we're going to do is adjust P2. That's the pot that feeds both the fine and coarse adjust front panel pots there. So by adjusting that one there we can set the maximum voltage uh, for the power supply on its output. So that's P2. So let's find P2. And P2 is this one here. These are just single turn pots. It's a little bit unfortunate. Uh, it'd be nice to have a 10 turn pot in there for some proper fine adjustment. But there we go. You can see the meter there is moving. But I'm not worried about that at the moment because I can independently set that up again. What I'm looking for is exactly 30 volts on the output. It just needs the tiniest of turns. So it'll be, I think, a little bit hard to get it spot on. I think I'm close enough at that, 30.023 volts. So that's fine. 
and the meter is actually spot on 30. So it looks like uh, it's the calibration was fine for the uh, a, the pots for setting up the meter full scale on volts mode. It looks like uh, all I needed to do was uh, adjust the uh, uh, P2 there to set the output voltage to 30 volts. Now we should be fully linear now so if I just test uh, one of the voltages I'll just set this up to 15 volts exactly and there it goes there and we're close enough 15.06 try another one let's try 5 volts that's about 5 volts there 4.96 yeah very slightly non-linear I mean it is just an analog power supply so I think we're good to go at that and just to double check, what do we get when we screw both the pots right down? More or less zero volts. So we've got the zero, we've got the full scale, everything in between will just be what it is. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and calibrate the, the current side of things. So I've got my electronic load hooked up off camera. I've left the voltmeter uh, hooked up and this uh, two wires here go way off to the electronic load. So just for uh, display purposes, I'm actually measuring the voltage here at the power supply. I don't really care what the voltage is at the other end of the load because that will be subject to any volt drop on these cables here. They are pretty heavy but they're not that heavy. Um, so the idea is you measure the voltage at the power supply. But like I said, not worried about that. We're, ca we're calibrating the current. Well, it helps when you put the electronic load around the right way. So I've just swapped a couple of cables there. No damage. Electronic load just uh, gave a little beep and uh, on the display it came up reverse. So I knew immediately what was wrong. But uh, yeah, it happens to the best of us. So let's go and try and calibrate the current output. Right, I've got the voltage set to maximum. 30 volts as you can see here. Got it switched to amps. So I'll just turn on electronic load. It's uh, reading 30 volts as well actually. And it's set for 1 amp. So we should see the meter go straight to one amp when I turn it on now. Yep, and there we go. And actually it's bang on one amp. It's perfect. So the manual does give some information regarding adjusting the current limit pot. I've got the meter accurate for zero to one amps. That's fine. But you need to be able to set up the maximum, uh, the, the, the current limit can be set to and what they're saying in the manual is adjust your electronic adjust your load not electronic load didn't have them back then adjust your load to 1.1 amps and then turn this pot fully clockwise and then adjust the current limit max control on the pot here until the meter just starts to fall so what you've actually gone ahead and done is you've set this current limit to 1.1 amps when it's fully clockwise, not 1 amp. You don't want 1 amp because you want to be able to achieve an output of 1 amp nice and reliably. So we'll do that now. I'll just set up 1.1 amps on the electronic load. There we go. And you can see it's kicked down. So now we'll adjust the pot. There we go. So I'll just adjust it now. This one's fully clockwise. We've got 1.1 amps load. Just adjust the pot until the needle starts to fall and you know with that fully clockwise you've got that set to 1.1 amps. And now if I obviously if I go back to 1 amp, the meter comes back up and we're good to go. And you can see also with a 1 amp load there I'm still getting a nice 30 volts on the output of the power supply. Okay, that's all disconnected now. I'm happy with the calibration, happy with the functionality. So now let's look at the case and what I've done there. So, first things first, I did actually get the nameplate for the front. Now this isn't the one that was on the ad where I purchased the power supply. It got lost. I had to email the seller several times before he managed to come clean and say he'd lost it. Said he'd shipped it but then said he'd lost it. So he managed to find another one. Unfortunately, this was for an L30-2, which is a 2 amp version of this power supply. However, I'm happy with that. I've managed to get rid of the dash 2, uh, etc. off of the front. And it'll just, it'll do me. It's maybe not quite as nice looking as I would have hoped, but never mind. So that just goes, it just hangs on the front here. And that's that there. 
So now I'll put the cover back on and then we'll look at the bezel. Now, never really noticed in, in the ad when I bought the power supply that it was actually missing the bezel. Because it don't look too bad, but when you see it alongside other Farnell power supplies that I've got, yes, it is definitely stands at a mile, it's missing the bezels. Now, obviously I couldn't find any second-hand ones without buying a whole new power supply. So what I've managed to do is 3D print my own bezels here. And the way that works is they they closely resemble the original ones, um, but I just made them a little bit simpler. So that just goes on there. This one here, I've just got a, a, like a, a 1.5 mil groove uh, right down the one side of the 3D printed bezel there, and then this one here. Uh, like that and then this top piece just goes on there like that and that's it. it does look a little bit odd because in the other power supplies I've got this is actually a metal top with the plastic sides uh, but I don't think it looks too bad it did nicely uh, the nameplate nicely butts up against the inside edges of the 3D printed bezel, so I don't think it looks too bad. Now the last thing I uh, need to look at is the knobs. It's missing the caps, and I don't have any that size. Uh, but what I did manage to find on uh, Farnell was some replacement knobs, which are very, very similar to the originals, and also obviously with the, the right caps. So I'll go away and change them now. So there we go, just got the last cap to put on and that's them in place and I mean they just look very very similar to the original ones there uh, virtually identical I'll put a link in the description down below to the knobs that I purchased them from Farnell so I'll put the part numbers down below so there we go that's this little restoration job done quite happy with it I'm going to put it up in the workbench and I'm sure it'll see some service over the coming years thanks for watching